It's a little joke for you, you know, the frustrated teenager, pray to Jesus. I said, Jesus, please, text me. <laughs> <laughs> the installment is extremely important at this stage. It was started way back around 1907, 1908, by one of our priests from Chile, Father Mateo, who had a special encounter with Jesus at Pere de Monial in France. He was there, and that's where the Lord appeared <coughs> to St. Margaret Mary. And if you go there today, there's a picture of uh, St. Margaret Mary, but there's also a big picture of Matteo, Father Matteo, in this. This is our habit. This is the habit of the congregation. Uh, this is something similar to what the Pope wears. We gave him permission to do that. <laughs> 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 much more beautiful than it is today and, uh, and this was the vision of the founder he saw men going out in white and, uh, uh, this is the, uh, the uh, this is the habit this is the picture of Matteo there and he went from there to Rome and got permission from Pius X to promulgate the enthronement in the home and it's been needed more so than ever than ever before you know, what we're doing many times, you now you are the select few. You, know, you are people <coughs> who have attended this, and again, it's people like yourselves that really have to carry the torch, have to carry the burden. And, you know, we need to get away from, you know, like somebody said, you know, I have my home and throne way back. That's fine, but, you know, are you wearing the same clothes today that you did? Uh, five years ago, <laughs> I am. <laughs> but uh, no, you're not. You know, and it needs to be not only promulgated, but it needs to be lived, because the families are being very much attacked today. There's a case going on in Florida of these teenagers who burned another teenager, severely burned, you know? and. Uh, it's in the courts now. They're all talking about it. How could this happen and so forth? Uh, we had a thing happen there over Memorial Day weekend. I remember talking to this kid at uh, Mary's table during the day, that Monday, and that uh, night. You know, he was out at 2 in the morning. And uh, there was a shooting. He was involved in the shooting. He was shot in the ankle, and two other guys were killed. Now we're talking about young men maybe 19, 20, 21. And, and your question would be, well, why are they out at 2 a.m. in the morning? You know? And why are they out you know, in that type of a, a milieu or an atmosphere? And it goes on and on and on. We have a whole focus on Harry Potter. You know, there's two powers in the world, the powerful good and the powerful evil. And the powerful good comes into our home, powerful evil comes into our home in many, many different ways. Obviously, television, you know, just uh, the day they announced, what's, you know, what's coming back to television? You know, you heard it first here, yeah? <laughs> Dallas, Dallas is coming back, you know? We had all of these, you know, bad relationships going on, adultery, all of that, you know, and the whole country was taken up, you know? Who shot Jay Ewing, you know? And uh, I guess he has resurrected coming back to that. <laughs> so we have to figure out who shot it again. You know. uh, but that's stuff coming in. And people say, yeah, there's nothing really wrong with that. In a sense, they may be right. But in another sense, they may be very wrong. Because it creates an atmosphere whereby what we believe in Jesus Christ is minimized. Is minimized. You remember the Beatles who said, we are more popular than Jesus Christ. Who talks about the Beatles today? Hmm. Who was the leader in South America who said he was so far ahead in the polls that even Jesus Christ could, could defeat him? And Jesus couldn't defeat him. And he won the election. 
and Jesus took them home that night. Ooh. Welcome, President Day. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. So those things come in. They come in, and, and sometimes, and especially raising kids, and some of you raising grandchildren. Raising grandchildren. I have a, a grand nephew, you know, and uh, his mother's complaining. He doesn't study. He doesn't study. And he, he shouldn't study. He's got a television in his room. He's got a computer. He's got all of these things. What does he want to study for when he's got the television there? You know? So we think we're giving them something. We're not giving them the truth. We're not giving them values that last. Values that will last. I know a woman married for 15 years, divorcing her husband. They got uh, three cars, you know, got three houses, swimming pool, got everything. And she said, you know, for the past 15 years, I'm not his wife, I'm his fantasy. Where does that come from? Pornography, obviously. But they're, they've got everything. Why were they divorced? You know, we may have everything, but if we don't have Christ, we have nothing. And for you, as you're going to enthrone your home today, what you're promising, what you're making a commitment to do, and don't enthrone your home if you're not going to do it, yeah. is that you're going to say that Jesus is in charge of my home in such a way that it makes a difference. You will see the difference gradually happening. You know, you will be confronting some of the evil, some of the doors that are open. Some of the doors that are open. You know, and opening the doors, you may never think that you have done it. But you may have done it in so many different ways. It comes into our homes, you know, with anger, okay, with bitterness, with unforgiveness, okay, with a sense of, you know, looking after the curious. Many kids are fascinated with Harry Potter magic and they don't have anything to do with Jesus Christ but if you're looking for real magic if you're looking for things that really define the imagination look at Jesus Christ with God all things are possible when we look at the miracle the raising of Lazarus Harry Potter doesn't have anything on it and you need to see you know are there doors I have to close? Sometimes we can get hot and caught up with all sorts of things, you know, and you're here, your hearts are stirred and moved by different presentations. But it has to be solidified, it has to work out. And many times you'll find yourself alone. I remember uh, the young man, a student I had, he lived in Texas. And I brought him a cross, a rather large cross. That was before they were checking on stuff. And uh, I brought it and I said, you can hang it in the hallway. Um, no, no, I can't hang it in the hallway. Because I have a business. And people come in here and I will offend them if they look at the cross. And he, I, he said, I think I'll put it in the bedroom. And, uh, he lost the business, lost the house. There are consequences when we live without Christ. The whole charismatic renewal said, Jesus is Lord. And people were enthused about it. But that has to break. We have to break it in our lives. What I mean by breaking it is it has to be lived in a real way. In a real way, you're putting the image in an important place in your home. And people will come in and say, what is that? And say, well, this is a, a symbol of Jesus Christ being in charge of our home. We pray before this image. You pray to the image, no, we pray before it. You know, each month. When you have difficulties, troubles, you go to the image. Pray before it. You have to begin to see that, you know, it's fine to have all this knowledge about mercy and love in our heads, 
but how is it unfolding in our lives? Your home is a church. It's a church, and church is there to glorify God, to give honor and glory to God. And sometimes we're overcome, we're overcome with our problems. What are we doing about them? Okay. Get Father Barry to pray over you. That'll do it. <laughs> I'm upping my fees to a hundred bucks a prayer hour. <laughs> that won't do it. That won't do it. It is you being open to what Jesus is asking you to do. Be transformed by the renewal of your minds. And that transformation means that what you have in your home, this image, this enthronement of the home, is something real. Something real. It's something that will see you through. Something that will see you through. Years ago, this is uh, my sister told me this story, and it's, it's a true story because uh, we lived in this home, and uh, before we lived in there, there was another family that lived in there, and there was a, a gypsy woman that came around. A gypsy woman came around, and. Uh, we have a superstition in Ireland, or maybe a fear, that you'd have to give her something, otherwise she could curse you. So this family gave her some money, and this gypsy woman said, there'll be two men with strange hats come out of this home. Two men with strange hats. What would that be? Two priests. You know the old Beretta that they had? Remember that years ago? I don't remember it, okay? You fall asleep with me now. And there was a priest in the other family, and obviously a priest in our family. So, again, uh, to see the power that the home has, we wonder where vocations have gone, you know, and they've gone back to homes. Homes in Africa, homes in India, countries that are not Catholic, but homes that are, are producing. And especially when we look at marriages, the attack on marriages, the attack on marriages, you know, for quite a while, not just two or three years, you know, but 15, 20, 30 years. We have to come back and see what is in the home that's destructive. You know, I lived in a home the other day, uh, somebody told me, while you were away, you had an awful lot of visitors. He said, visitors? Yeah. Ants. Ants came all over. She's not here. Let's go. You know, and they had to be sprayed. So the atonement will show us What's wrong? What's wrong? It'll be a tough decision to say, well, you know, this can't be part of our home. This can't be part of our home. When you have someone on the internet watching pornography, you know, and you have, you have women in that home. What an insult. What a disgrace. And you have people, you say, yes, well, uh, a couple of us married years ago, they said, you know, uh, I said, do you have any worry? over your spouse. And she said, well, he does it in the park. He puts us only on the weekends. You know. So they got married. And he did a little part. And she did a little part. Okay? And then he did a little heroin. And she did a little heroin. And pretty soon they were drug addicts. We, we have a conscience. We have something that says, this is off base. And what the entrollment is saying is telling us that. It's telling us that. You have here you're saying Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior of our home. Okay? You know, when we go through tough times, we go through cancer, we go through difficulties, Jesus is still there. He's still there. And say so that remember Father when I gave this spoke about covenant, you know, this is a covenant. This is a covenant that's given to us in the Lord. So uh, again to try to see how important it is. There has to be a foundation, and this is the foundation.
this is not, and I can guarantee you that you'll get opposition, probably more from your family than anybody else. More from your family than anybody else. Because they're saying, well, we don't like that picture. Someone told us last year, the picture was very anemic. And the lady said, well, he lost a lot of blood, you know that. <laughs> I I have a list of the page on page uh, seven. Reasons for the enthronement. This comes from St. Margaret Mary. Okay. It says, I will give them all the precious necessary for their state of life. I will establish peace with their families. I will bless every house and those places in which the image of my heart shall be exposed and, and venerated. I will bless every house in which the image of my heart is exposed and venerated. I will console them in all their difficulties. You know, when we go tough times, it's at home that it gets so tough. When you're dealing with an elderly parent, you're dealing with someone who has Alzheimer's, you're dealing with someone who has cancer, and there's nobody there but yourself. So I will console them. I will be their refuge in life, and especially the hour of our death. I will shed blessings abundantly on all their undertakings. These are some of the reasons given for the enthronement of the home. So not only do we, it's a, it's a normal conclusion to the family tree. The family tree says, we're praying for the family tree healing, and to ensure that the healing will go on, we need the enthronement. Again, what uh, we're going to do now is we're going to go through the enthronement uh, as I have it here in the booklet. And uh, again, when you go home, you continue it. Okay? There's a part there that says that you can uh, continue it after that. So uh, if you would pass your cards, your registration cards, to the end of the pews, we will collect them. Oh, Part of the reason for the cards is that we're going to try to follow up uh, this coming year 